Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to A Bird A Day. My name's John. I'm going to be reading from North, the book of North American Birds, Reader's Digest edition, 1990 publication. We're in the Birds of Prey section. The Birds of Prey. They are the warlords of the air. The hawks, falcons, owls, eagles, and other birds referred to as raptors. Swift, fearless, and powerful, they are superbly equipped for their lives as predators. Almost too well, for they have also suffered at human hands for the seeming cruelty of their behavior. But such a view mistakes an act for a motive. These fierce hunters, like all wild creatures, are only carrying out the roles given them by nature. Yesterday, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, for some reason, Sunday was designated a day off. No bird a day, so the sound went out. Um, but magically, we're back on. Monday, 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 let's get going. So the last bird with sound was the American swallow, I'm sorry, the black shoulder kite. Yesterday, we did the Mississippi kite, and I'm gonna do it again today so that we have the sound for it. So the Mississippi kite, let's look at the picture. There's the Mississippi kite. That's what the Mississippi kite looks like. The Latin pronunciation of the Mississippi kite is Ictinia mississippiensis. This creature was made for the air. No other bird, not even the elegant swallow-tailed kite, seems so much at home aloft. Before the morning mist has dissipated, flocks of these pale-headed kites are airborne, weaving through the treetops, waiting for the warming air that will carry them skyward. Sometimes they soar on outstretched wings, their tails fully fanned. Sometimes they draw in their sails and glide, tails moving like rudders in the current. But when the mood strikes, Mississippi kites can fly like birds possessed, twisting and turning, parrying each changing gust of wind. They're then streaking down on unsuspecting dragonflies to snatch them out of thin air. Lesser hunter, they might be carrying their prey back to the perch, but not the Mississippi kite. Head down, feet extended, these sociable birds delight in feeding aloft, and 20 or 30 of them wielding overhead can make a dragonfly wings fall like confetti. On occasion, the feeding flocks hunt low at treetop level, even at grass top level, but more often in the superheated air of the southern summer, Mississippi kites feed so high that they are all but invisible to human eyes. Even when nesting, the birds seem loath to surrender the sky. Treetop nest may be a hundred feet off the ground. Only two powers of nature can defeat the wings of a Mississippi kite. One is rain, the other is darkness. As for landing on the ground, a star would be more likely to fall to earth than a Mississippi kite. Mississippi kites are highly sociable birds, gathering in large numbers at nighttime to roost. Let's take another look at the Mississippi kite. Really cool looking bird. As you can see up top here, uh, the immature or the younger ones are very colorful with uh, some brown and some cross streaking along the tail, while the older ones are, are white with gray. Their habitat seems to be southeast, north part of Florida through Mississippi, Texas, and the like. That's why it has its name. All right. How do you recognize a Mississippi kite? Well, it's 14 to 15 inches long. They're slender with pointed wings. They're mainly gray, and they're darkest on their back, palest on their head. Their tails are black. Wings, again, are pointed. Uh, immature with heavy brown streaks on underparts and the faint bars across the tail. The habitat? Open country. Groves, brushy areas, and streamside thickets. Nesting? Well, they nest in a mass of sticks and tree or tall shrubs, anywhere from 4 to 100 feet above the ground. Their eggs 
are one to three at a time, and they're pale blue. Incubation period, which is how long it takes an egg to hatch, is about 32 days, and both sexes, male and female, roost on the eggs. The young have very downy feathers, and they leave the nest at about 32 days. Their food, that's mainly insects, and occasionally small snakes and frogs. So that is the bird of the day on a bird a day, the Mississippi kite. Very cool bird. Tomorrow's bird of the day on a bird a day is going to be the snail kite. We're not going to double it up. We're going to keep it consistent. So tomorrow will be the snail kite. I'll flap at you then.